everyone! It's Miss Susan from the Central Library of the Buffalo and Erie County Public Library System. And we are back on our porch today to bring you another family art break. Today I have my sons, Evan and Bradley. They are here to help me today. We're going to be doing some homemade printing using washable paint, some items you found around the house, some things we clipped from the garden, and maybe a tiny little mythological logical creature that we all like. So let's take an art break. So our materials today. Now I don't want you to be overwhelmed by all the stuff I have out here because I just really wanted to show you that you can use whatever you have around the house to do this project. Um, all you're going to need, some cardboard, recycle it from the garbage. You know you ordered from Amazon lately. Just cut it up into uh, manageable pieces. Um, we're gonna be, I'm gonna be using papers that are about eight and a half by 11, so just make sure it's bigger than that. You can also use, if you don't have cardboard, you could use paper bags. Here, ta -da! Newspaper. Um, we're also gonna use some paint. And some paint brushes. Anything that you have in your basement, as you see, these are some well-loved paint brushes. You can also use regular, um, like, kids' paint brushes. Um, you just want to get bigger ones because we are going to be using a lot of paint across the surface of um, our, our printing surface. And then, I'm going to suggest you get some really fun things to create a relief or resistance to your uh, print. So if you go on a little nature walk, feel free to find some, go and pick out some cool, interesting shaped uh, leaves and things. My only advice is that you pick stuff that's kind of big and easy to work with. If you find little tiny flowers, things like that, it doesn't, the detail doesn't always show up the way you want it to. But I did find some kind of cool shaped leaves that I thought might look good when we uh, printed. If you don't have uh, access right now to outdoor space or it's rainy when you decide to do this project, you can still make some cool resistance, uh, resistant Piece, resistance pieces. So I cut out this unicorn from a coloring book, right? And it was a little floppy. I was afraid when we printed it that it would um, get ripped. So I just traced it onto the paper bag and cut it out. And then you can have a little unicorn print, print as well. And most importantly for this, oh yeah, plastic wrap. I'm going to show you what we're going to do with that in a second. It's, it's kind of cool. And some kind of tape. So here is how we're going to make our printing surface. Um, you're going to start off with a piece of cardboard, as big or as small as you like. I, this is a very manageable size. And a uh, nice piece of tape. Nice size. Stick it to your counter because you're going to, or a table because you're going to need to have, uh, have it ready at hand. Um, and some plastic wrap. So I have this plastic wrap here, which I have unpeeled. Just try your best not to get it too wrinkled. That's why I'm cutting it. Here's my scissors here. I'm cutting it rather than peeling it off because if it gets all crinkled. Now as you see I have this nice smooth piece of plastic wrap over our cardboard and I am going to put some padding in between the um, cardboard and the plastic wrap. You don't have to but you'll notice my cardboard is corrugated and if you get those you'll end up with those lines on your um, prints, which is a kind of cool effect, but if you want it a little smoother, I would definitely use another paper bag or some newsprint to put underneath to create some padding. Okay, so now you'll see I use newsprint. It's very smooth. The plastic is very smooth over the cardboard. I just taped it around as tightly as I can. And now that we have the setup ready, let's go on the porch and see what we can create. Okay, so now we are going to make our prints. So in order to do that, we have our printing surface. We have our things that we're going to put down for resistance. We have our paint brushes and we have paint. So you can pick out any colors that you like and you're going to put it on this surface. So I'm going to pick red. Oh, that's yellow. Ha! Yellow. And red. and blue. You do need kind of a lot of paint for this. That's okay. This is nice washable paint. I suggest using washable paint if you're working with little ones. 
then you're going to take your paintbrush, whichever one you have, and you're going to brush it across the surface. Now, if you want it to be just one color, make sure you use different paintbrushes for each color. But if you don't mind blending, like I don't mind blending, you can let them all blend together. And you'll see that the colors are pretty interesting. Like I said, lots of paint to make it print properly. Cool, right? So then, you're going to take your nature items or whatever you decide. We're going to experiment with different things. And we're going to lay them down. And when we print, what do you think will happen? Let's find out, right? So we're going to lay these down. We're going to take a piece of paper. And because we're printing, we're not painting, we're printing, we're going to center it as best we can, push it down like this, very gently rub around all the sides for the paint to distribute evenly. Hello, B. Takes a little bit of patience for this part, but the result is pretty cool. So let's see what happens when we pick up. Three, two, one. Look at that. So you'll see there's paint everywhere, but where we put down the leaves and that created a white spot. So let's explore and have some fun. paper towel and wipe off excess paint and then you can layer back over with new colors. <laughs> So here is an example of our finished projects. And as you see, if you use a little less padding under over the construction paper, you get this cool like corrugated line effect, which is pretty neat if you like that. Sometimes we just did colors, sometimes we did some finger painting. And then we did the leaf resistance. And then some more over here. Here is our our unicorn turned out pretty cool. Unicorn one unicorn stamp technique and then the unicorn pattern itself that we use because we used a paper bag that is kind of like a cool unicorn too oh that turned out really neat and this one it's hard to see in the light because it's still very shiny and wet but it's a combination of just some very beautiful colors so i have to say we were having a bad morning this morning at our house everyone was over it and we came out and we did this and now everyone is smiling and having a good time and sometimes you just got to go big and make some memories right <laughs> thank you for watching